pretty nice voice, Ben. Good job. In Soviet Russia, stream starts yep, you. Perfect. That's gonna Battle be crews are operational. It's gonna be on record, and you're gonna be in trouble in about six months. Oh, that is actually probably the best Russian accent I've ever done. The country. <laughs> uh, all right. Hey. Are they giant Hi. ants? Giant hey. space ants? Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. We're here. Oh, They're... hey, we're streaming. Yeah, hey, I got pause that. that we're streaming. He did. So, guys, you were too busy being Russian. I'm Russian. I, I I took your advice from Raid Chat, and I saw the the trailer for this thing called the Orville. Holy oh. crap, <laughs> that looks great. <laughs> Yeah, John, have you seen that yet? Mm -mm. Oh, the Galaxy you, Quest you TV really show have. run by uh, Seth Meyers. Seth no, wait, not Seth Meyers. Seth MacFarlane. I'm getting yeah, names mixed say. up lately. I don't know. There's something wrong with me. It's always been true. Yeah. So anyways, Galaxy Quest TV show by Seth MacFarlane. Yep. Nice. Is it actually Galaxy Quest or is it his own thing? It is its own thing that looks amazingly like <laughs> Galaxy Quest. How yeah. Seth MacFarlane is it? Very. Uh, what well, okay, about it's interest level lowering? Uh, about forty percent. Okay, I can handle maybe about forty percent. Yes, it's more Galaxy Quest than Seth MacFarlane so far. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, well, hi, chat. Hi, hi chat room. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me tweet this out. Then we got to start because Ro has a cutoff time. Hello, Chuffle. Well, if we go, well, not that I'm saying if like, we, hey, I want to mess go, with Ro, if but we go, well, if we go a little over, it's not the end of the world. I got a nap in, so it's like if I only get a few hours sleep after this, it's yeah, like you, a toddler. You got are a you nap opening in. in the morning? Stop telling Ro what to do. Yeah, yeah. Ro, is I'm, the I'm, only I'm thing you do working? Because that's yes. all I hear about you doing. <laughs> Lately, it pretty much feels like that. I let's see. This week, I'm putting in. I added up my hours it looks like i'll be putting in about 56 hours this week great ouch yeah. he did yeah. 10 day, he did 10 days straight without a break and then on his first day off they tried to call him in yeah the and then the i phone, said the stopped working then i said <laughs> f you guys no and mm -hmm. so now after tomorrow in theory and then i say this in theory because the last several times i've attempted to have two days off in a row it hasn't happened but after tomorrow, apparently, in theory, I have Sunday and Monday off, and then I get to work another five days, plus who knows how many after that. But uh, we'll see what happens, because, like I said, haven't had two days off in a row in a while. Good luck. And, Memori and Memorial Day weekend's coming up. Yay! Yay! Yay. Which means Comic-Con's coming up. Yeah, panic! Yay! So we're we just going to not raid next week? Probably. Pretty much. That's, much That's pretty much. I, I may as well just cancel the two raid things. Well, I I'm mean, not going to be there. But I mean, oh, I, we I don't definitely shouldn't. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, guys. How are we going to get through trash? I know. <laughs> well, John hides through trash and boss fights now. So. <laughs> yeah, I just hide. I hide in other games. I've really where, stepped up my game. I was, I was going to say, where is John hiding during the boss fight? We, we, in, every time we fight a boss, we need to figure out, okay, where is John's hiding spot in this encounter? Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where I'm hiding. He's in the Nexus. John is hiding in the Avatar of Cassia right now. Yeah. that. Mm, I don't know. That sounds weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be It's weird. like you've transcended. I've been playing mostly Dahaka lately. Mostly. Mostly. Do you only play at night? They mostly come out at night, mostly. <laughs> you know what I'm enjoying about Heroes of the Storm right now, John? Free stuff? Everything? I am playing Lily and not being guilty about playing such a simple hero. Oh, I know. She's great. Yeah, Lili. don't listen to people who try to tell you that Lily's for scrubs. Because people will try to tell you that Lily's for scrubs. She's not. She's fine. She's great. And when, especially when she's put in a blind comp with Cassie and stuff. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah, good stuff. And Ro, you're getting called out in the uh, chat room for not playing enough D3 with a certain person. Uh, yeah, that's mainly because I just haven't had time. It's like okay, so <laughs> when I'm working like all the time, hours a week, and then what am I going to do with my free time? It's probably going to be playing WoW. I still haven't finished Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, Me neither. There's, there's still a whole bunch of Fallout DLC I haven't gotten to. And 
Ted, no. are you eating ice? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, it's it's. I'll play more Diablo three, quote unquote, soon. TM. Trademark. 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 Copyright sign. Hashtag. All right. Well, we've talked about uh, stuff. We've talked yeah. about things. Um, I need to tra- hold on one sec. Oh, I know okay. we'll you keep, don't we'll care, keep, Ben, but I'm going to turn off my fan. Hold we'll on. keep talking about stuff and things. Bro, keep it on. You want me to keep it on? Keep it. We want you to be comfortable. Yeah, be comfy, uh, Ro. Uh, fine. Be comfy. All right. It's not like yeah, people comfy are Ro is better than uncomfy, Ro. Like, feels weird, guys. it will be good. It'll be fine. Well, I mean, look, you got to get that hair blowing in your wind while we record. Your hair blowing in your wind? What? <laughs> in, the, in the wind. Hair blowing in the wind. That's how You it said goes. your wind. Well, he Dude, makes I his want... own wind. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I thought you were going to go and really, really. All right. Ro does a podcast about podcasts. Ro makes his own wind. <laughs> okay, that sounded weird. Fist. <laughs> what wind? What wind? Uh, all right, well, let's uh, let's do this thing. Ted, you... oh, oh, I was going to say intro, so that's weird. Intro's blah. Yeah, Ted should do the intro, because rows are long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike could break the show. All right, let me know when you want to get this thing going. I thought you were about to start. I wasn't going to rudely interrupt because I would never do that. And so you have uh, never done that. No, no, never, never in the history of the show of your. Wow, the guilt trip. So is this why she wanted to make sure that she was on for the show to give me guilt trips in chat? Mm. Holy crap, (laughs) Betty. Yes, I play Hearthstone because it's on my phone. Yes, I play Heroes of the Storm. You because play there's new content in Heroes of the Storm. Because I play Necromancer game. on Diablo 3 when I can. He's that Man, he's that you know, bro, what I can do is I, I can just mute her. <laughs> I have mod privileges in my own channel. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. R- uh, rant over. Uh, All no. right, we're ready. Who yeah. was whispering? We only have four people on this call, right? <laughs> Well, was, I heard someone. Was Rose fan. Rose fan <laughs> oh, was... Rose fan was doing it. Okay, yes. got it. Got it. <laughs> and I would just picture someone standing next to Rose going, "Yay!" <laughs> the whole Thank time. you for acknowledging me. <laughs> Rose pretends I'm not here. <sighs> Hi, Ro. Hi, Rose. We fan. all had fans. <laughs> I smell your pillow when you're awake. Oh. Rose fan, you're pretty weird. <laughs> That's a little creepy. <laughs> okay. Uh, you ready? Tet. Here we go. Welcome to Azeroth Roundtable with Ro, Ro's secret fan, Ro's guilt-induced paladin Smexy, and Tet Semi. Well, at least two of us are here. We'll see about the rest. Hi, guys. That's not how you do that. Hi. He's taking that... over again. That was weird. <laughs> Yeah. Weird. People are going to listen to this and go, not my Azeroth roundtable. <laughs> not oh, my Azeroth oh, roundtable. Have that discussion? Uh, Welcome to Azeroth roundtable, episode 217. My name is Ben Bumhofer, and with me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Hello, Ben. It is Friday night here in Azeroth, and I am more than happy to join you at the round table. It's a little rounder than normal. Actually, it's the same level of roundness it's always been, but it now has a nice balance to it. Because sitting across from us is not one, not five, as the intro might have suggested, (laughs) but, but two people. I messed that up. Not one, not three. John, two. there's four people here on the show there's today, and I think it's rather total. spectacular. There's four people at the table, Ben. <laughs> this is just a huge train wreck. Should we just start over? Okay, hold on. We're going back to black. Okay, Tet, when you're ready. <laughs> okay. No, we're not. It's nope, fine. nope, it's too late. The graphics <laughs> no, did well, it, and the graphics yep. dictate. Yeah. Okay, let's try this again. Welcome to Azeroth Roundtable with guest host Tetsemi and Ro. Dang it, he did it even worse. Do you even listen to the show, Tet? Yes. 
<laughs> you invite me on, you get the intros you get. Sorry. Hold on. Let's let Ro try. I mean, we risk it being the entire show as an intro, but let's let Ro go. No. Nope. No, you're I, up. I the graphics dictate, Ro, and it says World of Warcraft now. I was gotten a couple more fans. I was gonna let the fan do the intro. No, n no the fan wants to hear Ro. <laughs> the fan is hearing me though. Shh. <laughs> Just do the intro. Just do the intro. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go, Ro. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's the intro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Welcome to Us Round Roundtable, episode 217. My name is Ben Bumhofer. With me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Hello, Ben. It's Friday night here in Azeroth, and we're at a round table. There's four people here total who are being complete professionals, and this hasn't been the longest intro in the history of the show. Welcome, <laughs> Tetsemi, can't do an intro, and Ro, who just is real quiet for a while and then laughs and says a single phrase. This is going to be a phenomenal show. I'm, I'm a just tank. trying to find new creative ways to break your intro. The right? last, time, last time I went on forever and ever. This time I figured the best way to break the intro was to not say anything. Guess at what? All. Good job, guys. You did it. <laughs> You did yeah, it. the intro music is just going to be -bow -bow, and then just we move on. That, that's all we're doing. This week. Hey, you know when you invite a tank, they tend to take over. Sorry, it's force of habit. Has yeah. been in raid. Yeah, God. that's true. That's true. But uh, no, it is Friday night, John, like you said, and uh, we're here to talk about World of Warcraft and Blizzard and stuff like that because, hey, guess what? A whole bunch of random stuff kind of popped up this week, and uh, it's kind of important for us to talk about it. I think. Yeah, we, what don't, do you think, John? we don't usually talk about the news, but there's an elephant in the room this week, and some people are like, oh shit, an elephant. And some people are like, shit, an elephant. And I'm well, sure some people that, are like, I like elephants. And, you know what? I'm sure there's some people who are like, meh, whatever. They're not mad. They're not happy. They're kind of just nonplussed about the elephant. I mean, okay, sure. It's a giant majestic animal in the room, but sure, you be ambivalent. When I see an elephant, for me, it's usually like, oh, shit, an, an <laughs> elephant? <laughs> Is that like a, like a kitten, the way you said that? It's like... <laughs> I like that we're trying to do it, like, boil it down to line readings at this at this point. <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty! <laughs> <laughs> An elephant! Oh, okay. Well, John, um... So okay, which so elephant are we going to talk about? The... Well... <laughs> There's a specific one, I think. And, and the funny thing is, is that uh, when John and I did our, our weekly traditional, hey, let's go grab dinner before the show, he said, oh, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. And I actually blankly looked at him and said, what elephant? <laughs> I needed what? to make sure. <laughs> so, John, um, why don't you go ahead and intro this? Well, hey, everybody. John here from Azeroth Roundtable. And hey. thanks. Hi, let's, John. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, so, oh shit! It's an <laughs> elephant. His name is Destiny Two, and he Yay! showed up really unexpectedly this week, like super it... unexpected this week. He's on my launcher. Uh, he's gonna be. <laughs> he's he's right now. He's just in the room, but soon to be in your battle net launcher. I don't know what we're calling it anymore. Mike Morheim <laughs> said it's a battle net now. launcher, so I'm gonna keep calling it battle net. Yeah, so much for, for getting rid of the battle net and calling it the Blizzard app, right? <laughs> Rebranding? Fail. Hey, let's rebrand it to be company-specific. Then, <laughs> let's put non-company-specific <laughs> games on it. Brilliant! So, we'll just call it the uh, Blizz Division or Activision. What? You can't put the two companies together. I will bet Act you never Activision. see Activision in the name of that launcher. <laughs> ever. Oh, no. You it's might change back to the that battle is. net launcher because I mean that's honestly the only reason they're going on the launcher is they're like, hey, you guys have really good 
you know, voice communications on your network. We don't want to have to invent that for the game, so we're just going to integrate it and spend more time actually developing the game. Seems well, it's also to me. It's also not just the voice stuff. I mean, they said they want to make use of all the social features and whatnot. And I mean, so while you're playing World of Warcraft or Hearthstone or Heroes, if you look at your friends list, if you have any of those friends playing Destiny 2, you're going to know it. And from and what I understand, you'll be friends. able to send messages to them. But, Ro, how does this affect my WoW token? Because, good Lord, have you seen whoa, that lately? Whoa, hold on, hold oh, you're on. You're jumping ahead. You hold cannot... on, man. Okay, wow. first of all, time out, Tank. Yellow card, yellow card. Yeah, here's your first warning. <laughs> We're going to be done with this show in five minutes at this rate. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Thanks, Ro. That was insightful. John, why don't you tell him about the Patreon? What happened? <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, okay, so here's the thing about Destiny. If you haven't had a chance to actually really look into it or anything like me, um, you first of all, it's the PC version that's actually going to be added to the Blizzard launcher. I, I know that probably goes without saying, but uh, you're still not going to be able to talk to your friends who are playing on PS4 or Xbox One through your, your Battle.net launcher, as far as I know of. And I just called it the Blizzard launcher and the Battle.net launcher in the same sentence. So let's, <laughs> Well you know, done, Brandon. <laughs> let's make working. sure we get that right. <laughs> But, um, I, I mean, I find it a little weird that, first of all, it's coming to PC, which is awesome. You know, yep. yay. That's the, the whole reason why I never played Destiny 1 in the first place is it wasn't on P PC. Same. But, I mean, what does this say about Blizzard as a whole? I mean, I, I know that they're part of Activision, and we always tend to forget that unless something bad happens, because then we blame Activision <laughs> as opposed to Blizzard. But... They're starting to, you know, th this is the first game that they're adding in. And the thing is, is, it's a Bungie game that they're adding in onto their their launcher. So what's up with that? Well, I, I think the first thing we need to keep in mind is uh, this is not the first major cross-pollination uh, between Bungie and Blizzard. Um, actually, it was the Diablo team that was consulted by Bungie while working on the Taken King expansion for Destiny 1. Guess what? The Taken King is the part of Destiny that I absolutely loved. Um, huh. I found this out after the fact, too. So it, it, was the best, it was the best that that game ever was, and it was the part that Blizzard kind of helped inform. Now, we don't know percentages. We don't, they, rumor is they went to them, and Blizzard talked to them about what it was like doing the Diablo 3 to uh, Reaper of Souls transition and mm -hmm. how they learned from mistakes and how they recovered and what they ended up going and doing. And so there, there is a history there um, with these two companies working together. And I actually think Bungie and Blizzard go together really well. I mean, a lot of people keep looking at it as Activision is now cross-pollinating with Blizzard. But as of right now, we can infer and, like, take, hints that it might be going some other way but right now it's just Bungie and Blizzard working together and it's taking a game that is very much in the wheelhouse of a Blizzard game and mm -hmm. putting it in an ecosystem that makes a lot of sense and uh, before I pass it around the round table I'll say my personal take on this is this uh, I thought Destiny 1 was a game of good potential that wasn't realized fully I had fun with it. It played excellent. Gameplay was great. Uh, I didn't care about the story. It had a lot of problems. Um, and even when I was the most into it during Taken King, I played through all the single player stuff and I had other friends who played it and I just couldn't find a team. I couldn't find friends to play with, could never schedule time together, never got it to gel. Destiny 2, interest was peaked, hoped it was better. The second they said it's on the Blizzard launcher, interest level through the roof. Because now I know it's going to be in an ecosystem where I already have an amazing friends list. I already can, like, hopefully find people to play the game. I hope it's good. I hope other people play it. But that game with friends sounded excellent. And now it feels like it's going to be something I'll get to try. Um, I think it's a really good fit and a really smart move for both Destiny and for Blizzard games. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Ted, what about you? I know that, um, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure you haven't played any of the Destiny games before, correct? Or Correct. Well, technically, right. there's been one. But. Well, right, but I, I have neither an Xbox nor a PS4, so unless it's on PC Master Race, I don't 
I haven't been able to play it, but no, I didn't get a, I didn't get to play it. Um, from what I've seen, though, <clears throat> I'm definitely interested in, you know, this will come as a shock to everyone's story and lore. So if it's got good story and lore, count me in. I'll play. What I if like... I told you it had Nathan Fillion as a smart ass robot? Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I need. You know, Nathan Fillion or. Uh, you know, Wash playing a smart ass robot. I'm good. <laughs> either, either one will work. Alan Tudyk, you know, smart ass robot. I'm good. There <laughs> but, we uh, go. <laughs> um, no, I it, yeah, definitely be interested in in playing this. And uh, like I said, you know, it's a non Blizzard game on a Blizzard launcher. I if, yeah, okay, I'm. I'm sorry, I'm not the Blizzard launcher is not sacred to me. I've got enough stuff that's on there. What what I wish they would do, and uh, you know, make you know how you can reorder everything. I mm -hmm. wish there was a way to like gray out certain icons or hide them because if this keeps up with other companies and maybe other games, you know, that launcher is going to get a bit unwieldy. So it'll be interesting to see if they redo the UI of the the launcher for that. But I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Now, now, Ro, have you had a chance to do any Destiny work at all? I did not play Destiny 1. I followed a lot of people who tweeted about playing Destiny because, well, a lot of those people were like devs for the WoW team, among other things, or, <laughs> or community managers and stuff. I actually watched uh, Lore stream Destiny at one point, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, a couple other people play Destiny. So I understand what Destiny is kind of like. I hear that there was a class in Destiny called a Warlock. Yep. And I guess that means that, you know, if I play Destiny, that my Warlock should translate really well, right? You know, summoning demons and all They're that one stuff. They're one-to-one. Actually. Basically the same yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a absolutely. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I know it's not like that. But yeah, instead of, of throwing, you know, like a, a fell fire bolt, you have a gun. I mean, yeah. same thing. Right. You're right. shooting right. things. Your yeah, minions are bullets. Green lasers. Your... your fire is bullets your uh health stones are bullets your uh, drain life that's bullets bullets um are sometimes there's a grenade bullets? or what bullets if, if, are my pets bullets yeah they're bullets oh, you get no, no, a lot no, no, no. more of them and they're bullets okay so do i think that i would play destiny 2 i'm not sure if i would it's kind of one of those things where, like, I have so I have so many things that I'm more interested in playing or finishing right now that I just don't know if I'd have the time to play Destiny 2. But that being said, do I think that Destiny 2 is a good fit for the the Battle.net Blizzard, you know, environment? Sure. I mean, I don't see it being a, a bad fit necessarily as far as that goes. I think that especially now that you have this... Uh, large huge community of people that play overwatch apparently 30 million players i think that destiny 2 is really going to benefit from that area of you know blizzard fandom the people that are into overwatch i feel like a lot of those people are going to feel a bit attracted and pulled into destiny 2 uh, so when it whether it comes to like is this good or bad as far as having it on the launcher I'm fine with it, it being on the launcher. I mean, it's like I play different games on Steam that are from different companies. And <gasps> so this is this is basically like a it, I would have no problem with Blizzard turning their launcher into something like what Steam is. Of course, there have been other companies that have tried doing something like this, like Origin, which is yeah. origin is origin. I, I, I don't. I'm not even going to go there. But. Uh, we don't talk about origin here. Look, and that's the part of me that feels like I do understand where people that get a little upset or a little defensive about something like this. Uh, that's the part where maybe I understand a little bit of where they're coming from. There are games that I just haven't played on PC, despite it being my preferred platform, uh, simply because I couldn't get it through Steam. And yeah. it was, uh, oh, I can't get it through Steam. Well, I don't want to have to launch origin every time I want to play this game, so I'm just not going to get it on PC. 
And so I've made that decision before, and so I can see why somebody not in the Blizzard ecosystem, obviously I'm entrenched, so this is like, hey, we're putting a game you're kind of interested in on the platform you use. How's that sound? It sounds great. Um, but somebody who isn't in the ecosystem might be like, eh, I, don't, I don't care for this decision. At the same time, I... I think Blizzard is going to curate this. I don't think we are going to see the Battle.net launcher become a giant store full of just everything. I think they are going to curate it for certain projects, certain things that make sense. I think there's going to be a type of game that ends up being there. Um, and I think it could end up being Blizzard games. It could end up being Activision games. Who knows if they'll ever branch out even beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I think Destiny um, and Bungie specifically is doing this because it does a lot of the legwork for them while at the same time preventing them from having to pay royalties to Steam, essentially. Right. It's well, like and, a 30% cut, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, even getting uh, back to a little bit of what Ro was saying, um, and actually, John, you too, the thing is, is I think one of the big reasons that they're using Blizzard or the Battle Net Launcher or whatever the heck it's called is the fact that it's made specifically for a multiplayer experience. Yeah. Um, one of the things that Rose said is that, you know, you, you think that maybe it might take away from Overwatch a little bit. In my idea, I think it's actually filling a perfect niche for someone like Tetsemi where one of the big reasons Tet you don't play Overwatch is because of the lack of story to it. You know, it's so much more of a multiplayer experience. Whereas with Destiny, you're getting a multiplayer experience, but it is story based and there's lore and missions and stuff like that. So it might be an absolute perfect fit for you. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> and also, and like, oh, OK. No, go ahead. Ted. No, I was going to say, and also just from a, you know, since I program and, and work on uh applications for a living you know part of it is the amount of effort that it would take to integrate a voice communications stuff into the into the application is is and get it correct you know you could do it bad but to get it correct is huge mm -hmm. so you know having they figure well we'll take the development money for that and instead of having to spend it on on hours of people programming you know that we can just say we'll tie into your api and your voice chat and save a bunch of you know development time that means they can put more into the systems i like it and blizzard yeah. blizzard's voice chat is phenomenal I, it's right. surprisingly good. I yeah. actually would use it. I mean, a lot of people will say, here, join my Discord, and that's fine. Um, I have my own issues with that. I'm not a huge Discord fan, but I have no problem doing it. But, like, to me, I would use Blizzard's voice chat for even non-Blizzard games over a lot of things that are out there and a lot of options. If we're on Battle.net, friends, I, and we were going to play, like, player unknowns battleground i'd be like oh, hey that let's would be jump great. on let's jump on blizzard chat and and do it and because it yeah. just works really well so it makes sense for them to say hey let's forgo having to design our own and let's use something that's already there and good mm -hmm. how um how would destiny 2 play as an esport do you think is there an esport aspect to it Mm, I didn't I, so I didn't watch a ton of what they talked about for Destiny 2 itself as a game um, going off of what I know in Destiny 1 I think they did try to really push the crucible which is what there was which was what their multiplayer was but the crucible was never particularly super interesting or great and it never really took off all that much but that might be something they revisit for yeah, you know, destiny. Thing. Right, which would make it another good fit onto the the you know the the launcher and you know the the whole esport push that the Blizzard's doing is maybe they're trying to also pull in some um, you know other Activision Bungie properties into that whole esports drive they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see them. You know, maybe. Well, no, never mind. I wouldn't see that because Bungie's not doing Halo anymore. So never mind. 
forget if I said anything about that. <laughs> but I mean, you could see that, right? Like there could yeah. be a time where, again, this is in theory, if they're redesigning the battle net launcher, where there could be an esports tab and you could click it. And right there in the launcher could be streaming. Just pick your game right now. We have a heroes mm -hmm. tournament going on. We have an overwatch tournament going on. We have destiny two being played like, pick what you want to watch and it's all right there like they could really make this app uh way more robust and interesting yeah yeah agreed there's yeah, and an... go ahead there's another thing that's worth mentioning and i mean it may seem like another elephant in the room to talk about when it comes to, oh, shit. to all of this but <laughs> oh man another elephant but let's talk money here uh, quite simply Having this on Blizzard's launcher exposes Destiny more to people that play Blizzard games. Uh, by the same token, all those masses of people that are playing Destiny are going to, in turn, get a bit more exposure to games made by Blizzard Entertainment. Those are to large spheres of players, there's probably a healthy bit of overlap between those two, but where there's not overlap is the potential for some people from one game to try out the other simply because they're seeing that's there. I mean, quite simply, that's how a lot of people who are playing Overwatch, thanks to something like, uh, you know, seeing info about the Nexus challenge, ended up trying out Heroes of the Storm. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think we'd ever see a cross-game promotion between Destiny and Blizzard games where, like, if you do so-and-so in a Blizzard game, you get this in Destiny 2, or you do this in Destiny 2 and you get something in a Blizzard game. Oh, Could that happen? It, oh, it, yeah. It, it probably will, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, on top of all of this, I like the fact that uh, for a lot of people, it'll mean that they'll be spending money to play Destiny 2 and to try it out and to see what it's all about for me. If I really do end up being interested in Destiny 2 and wanting to try it out, I'm not going to have to pay a single dime. Yeah. Why is that, Ro? Well, Ben, in, in the little FAQ thing for this whole Destiny 2 shenanigans, it said, will this mean I'll be able to use my Blizzard balance to buy Destiny 2? And the FAQ said, yes! And I'm like... That's great. That means that I can sell gold for WoW tokens to redeem for Blizzard Balance to buy Destiny 2. I'm the only person to have thought of this. That's amazing. And then I went into WoW and saw that the WoW token had jumped up to 130k. That's good for our realm, I guess, because I, I've actually seen already that some people have seen it up to 300k on certain realms. Well, so it's actually, so the way the WoW token works is it's uh, regional based so if it's 130k on earth and ring it's 130k on every north american realm uh, on european realms the price is up to uh it was at one point went up to 250k which was like the highest it's ever been in europe and in north america it peaked after this whole announcement rush it peaked at 140k before the announcement because I have charts and graphs in front of me. It's, it's <laughs> like we're playing Mad Money here. Before the uh, before the announcement, the price was about... It was going between 100 to 110K. Now, as of the recording of this show, the price has actually settled back down to like 112K, roughly. So anytime a big announcement like this is made where there's something new that you could potentially buy with... Battle Net Bucks, Blizzard Balance, whatever the heck you want to call it, the WoW token price becomes highly volatile, but it eventually stabilizes and goes back to more or less roughly where it was, although over time, we're just seeing the WoW token price slowly, gradually go up anyhow. I mean, that's just kind of how it's been. So people who are freaking out like, oh my gosh, this thing's going to stay at 150K or it's going to hit 200K in North America. It's not going to do that. I mean, by the time this is all done, by the time Destiny 2 comes out, the token will probably be at, you know, 130K or something like that. But that's just how the token's been working. It, it it's just these first few days after an announcement is made where it's really interesting to try to play the token market. But otherwise, it'll be business as usual. I'm just excited about the possibility of 
if I do make enough gold and if I feel like giving Destiny 2 a shot, I don't necessarily have to throw any cash at it. It's uh, if you know how to make golden wow, and there are plenty of ways to learn how to make golden wow, uh, you can do the same. It, it's all up to you. And for people who don't care about Destiny Two at all and want to buy golden wow using the wow token, well, the last couple of days they had some pretty nice opportunities. If people had, ex- uh, you know, disposable cash to throw some tokens for gold. So what you're saying is that I should have paid more attention to Twitter the last couple days and sold some gold. Or Indeed. sold some tokens. Indeed. Yeah, it's okay. I've got a decent amount right now. Doing okay. Doing okay. So, yeah, it's just, um, you know, it, it kind of threw a lot of people for a loop that something like this was going to happen. And if there's any sort of pr- cross-promotion going on and stuff, more power to everybody. You know, yeah. the thing is, is the more games that are out there that are better, it means that everybody has to up their game and make games even better. I mean, Blizzard alone has had this problem themselves. That's one of the reasons why they do cross promotion so much. They're trying to get you from one game to another so that you enjoy all of them. And then they can, you know, totally go around and destroy every other game that's out there because they make great games. Just simple as that. Yeah. I mean, and, and I know, I know probably the most common thing I saw was like, Oh, well, it's just going to be all clutter now. I am sure if we reach a point where that sidebar is seven miles long, honestly, they might even do it before we get to Destiny 2, there will be a way to remove games you don't want on there. Like There's an easy way to do it right now. To remove or to just move where it is? Well, I mean, that, that's what I was going to say. You can you can essentially change the order of the games that appear on your launcher. So if you essentially don't want Destiny 2 to appear on your launcher, just move the icon down to the bottom of the list and boom, less Destiny 2 on your launcher. It's like where I put Hearthstone. Destiny, it's like, it's you're like on the Starcraft bottom. <laughs> no one likes you, yeah, bottom and then you dweller. Get to, yeah, exactly. You get to feel real vindictive about it. So you can take your own outrage and upsetness over this thing and just be like yeah i showed you i put you at the bottom of the launcher dog pile on destiny Bleh. take that hearthstone yeah i'm hearthstone is on the bottom of my list but i like hearthstone just fine well that's because you play everything john i do play a little bit of everything yeah a little yeah. this little that yeah starcraft too. Gosh. hell of a game you can say every hero that you play in heroes is uh you you, you know you touch a little bit of blizzard every day a little bit of blizzard yeah, gotta gotta yeah. stay fresh on all those sick sick heroes. Um, well, and that's that's something else that that people mention. They're like, "Oh, great! How soon before we see Destiny Two heroes in Heroes of the Storm?" And I'm like, "Well, slow down a minute. You know, give them time <laughs> to get the thing on the launcher and launched, and see how long the the game is and how popular it is before not you start that. doing that." Well, well what if I were that, to we tell you? Have- we only have like five Overwatch heroes. They're gonna right, need to exactly. get to. They're they're gonna need to get to at least like what ten Overwatch heroes before they start thinking about okay, let's think outside the Blizzard franchises. I mean, there there's so many characters. There's so much space in Heroes of the Storm that there's left to to try to add heroes from other Blizzard games into Heroes of the Storm that I don't think they're going to even try to to go outside of the box with their Heroes of the Storm is. BlizzCon the game, and then that brings up another thing. Someone asked, well, th- someone asked me on Twitter, do you think that Destiny is going to be at BlizzCon? And, and my answer to that, I don't know what you guys think, but my answer to that is, I think there's a 90% chance that you will see Destiny demo stations at BlizzCon, and I don't think it's going to be that huge an area, but I think they'll have a little bit of space, there'll be some representation, uh, it's just so that people can try it out and stuff because hey cross promotional and stuff there's nothing wrong with that because all in all it's still you know sharing part of the the blizzard fandom and space and stuff like that i don't think we're going to see a destiny 2 tournament i don't think you're going to have destiny panels i just think it will be there for people to play should they be interested i wonder if it'll be there i think it will i think it would make sense to be there I, don't, I, I mean, and, if, if it's definitely on the launcher by then. It makes do we, do more sense for Destiny. 
it makes more sense for Destiny to be there than for like Newegg to be there, you know, <laughs> or, or or for or some of these gaming peripheral companies. You know what I mean? You're not wrong. <laughs> okay, I I will give you that. It's true. Um, what I will say though about Heroes of the Storm, uh, hey guys, remember when Sonic was put in Smash Brothers? Yeah, that was awesome. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, don't crap on it until it happens and it's just a really bad, poorly implemented hero. I know. Hey, we'll worry about that when we get there. And first of all, the hero everybody wants is they want Cade to come over. And if you want to put robot Nathan Fillion in Heroes of the Storm, I'll allow it. Like, I'm okay with that. I'm fine. I will. Is he pretty much the only iconic character there is in Destiny? Because I, I haven't played Destiny one, so I know nothing. Pretty about much. It. I mean, like you have well, Tyrion Lannister, but I mean, he got he got, he got replaced. Yeah, you, you got shitty floating robot Peter Dinklage, who got replaced by shitty floating robot uh, Nathan Drake. And Nolan he was North? way better after that. Yeah, Nolan North, and uh, you know it's. <laughs> Like, no, they don't really have any like, super iconic characters. They have a few. Like, Destiny, if there's any big Destiny fans, are like, no, oh, we got the guy from the Iron Guard who's got, like, a hammer. I'm like, all right, cool. Enjoy your hammer, guy. There's this weird queen lady, and she was all right, but I don't know. She was, like, basically <laughs> Kerrigan, and I think she might have died. I don't know. But <laughs> Well, look, if they're putting in Sarcastic Robot Nathan Fillion, I demand that they put in Sarcastic Robot Alan Tudyk in there as k2so everybody right. wants him i right. know that we, yeah. we talked a little bit about that before the show but he deserves to be in there too in fact let's put jedi in there all right well my prediction from last uh blizzcon episode was disney was buying blizzard and so there now you go it's true and now it's gonna be happening they're all in heroes of the storm i can have a jedi fight thrall my life is complete everything is good <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh marvel versus capcom versus blizzard let's make it happen there you go i wouldn't play that game he's so good he's so good <laughs> i mean like from a hero's perspective because i i got asked this question as well my answer is this like i want good heroes and heroes of the storm and who they are doesn't particularly matter that much to me as long as they're fun to play and enjoyable so i really don't care if they put tony hawk in heroes of the storm as long as he's fun to play they kind of already did they put in lucio he basically plays the way i would want tony hawk to play if he was in heroes of the storm okay it's well really question great. for you old tony hawk like current day tony hawk or like tony hawk's pro skater 2 tony hawk uh i mean one would be a skin <laughs> okay true <laughs> well if you're gonna go that far then you need the the guy from skate or die in there i mean come on yeah. no that will be that'll also be a skin. That'll be the But it'll be like the slight coloration that's off so that you don't acknowledge that it's skate or not. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> okay, now I really do want this in the game. Like it just doesn't matter. I mean, people sometimes get so precious about these things and like like not trying to make you feel bad for being too precious about something, but look, I take Star Wars way too seriously. And yet <laughs> I used to take it way more seriously. Yes. And I eventually so I. just learned, just roll let it with go. it. Just let it go. Just enjoy, just enjoy stuff. Guess what? If you enjoy stuff, it's better. This is me saying this, by the way, everybody. And I'm just saying, just enjoy stuff. People are going to be like, what happened to John? Did you guys put him on something? Why is he being so positive, <laughs> Mr. Chipper? Well, we're just all in a good mood. But just, he's, he's, uh, he's high on life right now, folks. <laughs> but just enjoy stuff. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. It, just like it's okay to like Marvel comic characters and DC comic characters. Well, that's no. just silly. I'm so pumped no, for I the Wonder Woman movie. But if you're oh, like, John, what do you feel so about DC? I'm like, okay i like batman and i Batman's like cool. and i like wonder woman and like that's kind of it wonder woman ben doing careful ben we'll get <laughs> we'll get muted on twitch you keep that up <laughs> <laughs> oh good point good point uh... so i mean as long as there's you know good play good play what the heck am i saying um you know good play through good characters you know in just fun times who cares what they put on the launcher? You know, uh, as long as it's not like Steam with their whole and now everybody can publish their own game and then there's thousands of games, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, Steam yeah. has turned into okay, hold on, I gotta ask this real quick, because 
I don't know if it's just like I maybe Steam has logged into my internet browser history and caused this problem, or if this is just the world that we live in. Like, are you assaulted by boobs the second you open Steam nowadays? Because I feel like I haven't opened know, it in a while. Every game yeah. I look at on the main page of Steam, it's like, hey, we added a new anime boob game for you to play, and I'm like, I. I have bought zero anime boob games. Why do you think I want this? It's so because of the 20 trials got, you've downloaded. They've got the uh, Apple Store in your uh, in your Steam launcher, is what you're saying? I, yeah, <laughs> basically. It's just like, here, an anime boob game. Here's an anime boob game for people who like, um, I don't know, dinosaurs. Like, it just... <laughs> <laughs> There's one for it's, everybody. <laughs> targeted no, it's it. it's not it's not your it's not your Steam launcher alone. It's something that's actually been relatively recent on Steam that kind of picked up over the past year, and that's because there were there were a few games introduced to Steam that kind of went this hybrid way of like being you know entertaining games, entertaining puzzle games or action games and stuff like that, but really were like hyper over sexualized anime stuff and then steam noticed oh hey these are selling incredibly well we should probably spotlight more games like this so then other game companies started to take notes it's like oh well games like uh honey pop and you know fill in several letter blank people i i, I heard of honey pop which is like some anime puzzle game because i saw jesse cox playing it on youtube and it you don't was... need to defend yourself bro it's okay no, <laughs> it's a safe place <laughs> I, I don't i don't care but the thing is games like that inspired other companies to like well if that game can do it then we can do it too and so now steam's become just it, it's it was only a matter of time uh but yeah that your your launcher is not alone, John. Everyone's okay. is pretty much. I like just that. opened it and there isn't anything there right now, so I feel like I've now made myself a liar. But um, <laughs> all right. I just well, it's because you bought that. everything. They're not advertising yeah, to you. I just got it all now. It's nothing but a party over here. That's why I'm not in WoW. I'm just too busy looking at anime boobs. Um, <laughs> I am cutting point... that part out. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Is... <laughs> There's one point that we haven't talked about or, or brought up, and that is the the timing World of, Warcraft. of Destiny 2. And I'm it's sorry, so, like, I believe the, the launch of Destiny 2 is September 9th, if I'm not mistaken. And I was trying to think in my head, well, if you think about WoW's patch schedule and their content schedule, I think September, around September, October... It, depending on where you think Argus is going to launch and all that stuff, I think September is actually going to be a period of time, much like right now, where we're kind of in a little bit of a lull as far as content goes. And it feels mm. like it's also just it would be a very ripe time for people who might be, you know, a little bored or tired with World of Warcraft to try something new. And, and Destiny definitely has something that a lot of people who play World of Warcraft are into, and that is loot. I mean, if there were ever... I have not played Destiny myself, but having watched, you know, playthroughs and streams and stuff like that, if ever there was a game that was all about the loot, Destiny is the one. A lull? Bro, what are you talking about? I've been having such a good time killing these hundred demons that I just <laughs> haven't even noticed that there might be a lull going on. And, right and finding now. and finding ten hidden treasure chests? Yeah. Is yeah, that great. the next thing? Uh, it is. This, this week's right. mm -hmm. one was finding ten of those hidden treasure chests. Yep. I'm I'm not I'm not done with the hundred demons yet, because I just couldn't bring myself to do it so just hop on a gun and it takes 15 minutes not yeah, too bad yeah i know but, but but it's the whole concept of yeah it's just like i it's logging in to kill a hundred demons is the is the point where i'm at but 10 treasures that doesn't seem too bad with flying now it seems even better if i wait a week and everybody's already done it yeah and then there's no competition for these 10 treasures <laughs> Exactly. Um, you see, you're doing the smart thing by waiting for everyone else to get it all out of their system. Yeah. The the cool thing, though, is, well, I mean, maybe not. Maybe I'm, I'm reading too far into this. But another bomb that kind of dropped is the fact that there's been some new hirings going on at Blizzard as of late. In fact, yes. uh, it was was it yesterday that that was on Twitter, I think. Uh, anyway, they, what, a day this week sometime. Um, Christy Golden was actually hired on to Blizzard. 
uh, as a story person. So, I mean, immediately that makes my heart leap with joy because I love all the books that she's written. And now I, we don't know exactly what she's doing, whether it's going to be, you know, actually, you know, coming up with story content, uh, publishing something, writing a new book. We don't know what's going on with that, but for a time where it's like, you know, kind of a little lacking in story, this is potentially something really cool that could be happening. Yeah. Could be Chronicle. She could be working on Chronicle three, volume three. Yeah. I feel more like Chris considering, especially like how long they plan and try to develop, you know, plot lines and storylines and stuff like that for wow. Heading into the future. I feel like, Christie's influence won't really be seen or noticed until the next expansion, whatever it is. I feel like Blizzard has a, a pretty good firm grip on what they're doing with Legion in terms of story and lore, whether you like it or not. But where we go beyond that and how we touch on the subjects beyond that, like old gods or whatever other stuff happens after the Legion's dealt with, uh, I think Christie will definitely have a part in making that all a thing. Yep. Okay, so then the worst possible thing that it could be is, uh, okay, guys, we've really written ourselves in a corner here. Um, unfortunately, Anduin is looking for a a shadow like you know demon blade called um, Frostborn. Um, we need to figure something else out here. What's going on? And <laughs> you know, let, let's call Chrissy Golden in. Help. And we've got this new character Put out the concept. golden signal. I will always... Christy Golden will always be, like, somebody I'm super excited about because she found the, ooh, a piece of kindy joke funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Despite being the person who wrote that character and our vicious mocking of that character's <laughs> demise, like, she was okay with it, so okay by me. Uh, just like when I made a little joke at Varian's expense on the internet and Taryn Gregory was okay with it. It's as long hey, as these Chris, yeah. as Christy Golden was okay with the piece of candy? Yeah, she laughed about it. <laughs> when did she find out about this? I told her that I said it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you John never owns told up me to that. John owns up to his jokes. I did. I was like, I don't know. Let's see if she finds this funny or awful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I do. I, if I'm going to say something horrible, I try to make sure that the people who would find it the most horrible also hear about it. And if they find it funny, then I feel like I'm vindicated. Well, perfect. <laughs> Which is why I don't feel as guilty as the bring your kid to work day tweet as I possibly should. Oh, jeez. Uh, Everybody, you should follow John on Twitter. He, no, he's funny sometimes. It's not, it's not good advice, but <laughs> it's great advice. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, well, I derailed, but uh, you totally did derail. I did. I'm sorry. It's but, okay. I made it about but, me. But, it should be about Christy Gold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but if if she helps the story, I'm almost wondering if maybe she is going to give a little bit of story direction to some of the you know, how the content's revealed and stuff like that, because, I mean, we've been over it ad nauseum, but the, <laughs> but dumping all the story at the beginning of this patch in this expansion cycle and now having these, hey, go kill 100 demons. Oh, go find 10 warm, you know, warm tongue chests. Kind of disappointing, you know, when we were hoping for a little bit of 5-1 revival. For yeah. people that for people that might remember a little show that existed on the internet called Flex Mode, where uh, Ben, John, and I, and and Rem would would make stuff up, I would totally want to do an episode of Flex Mode where we make up the story, the real story of the Broken Shore, like what actually was going on between the time we got on the Broken Shore and then went into the Tomb of Sargeras, because you could come up with all sorts of stories with, with these characters. Well, I just, well. I want to know some of the the backstory, like, okay, great, we gave Khadgar 2,500 nether shards, and he gave us back 2,400 of them. What did he need the one for? And you who are those, you don't who are know. those 10, <laughs> who are the 10 coins for? You know, who are those 10 coins we, he keeps dropping over the broken shore that we have to go get out of the mud for? I you keep know, forgetting what, to do that quest. 
that that kind of thing. It's like there's a whole bunch of go do this, but there's no story follow up to something that seems like there should be story follow up for it. Um, and and, and we, just just for Medi. And can we have a continuation of the Sylvanas and Gen Grey main storyline, please? That's not just for Medi. There, I know. there are other people who might be also <laughs> super interested in that. Okay, so wild theory here. Probably untrue. Wild theory. Okay. The entire reason why we're doing this on the Broken Shore is because Illidan is pissed that we killed him and he's making a bet with Cadgar to see what we'll actually do because we are just sheep who do exactly what we're told in order to, to progress. <laughs> Sold. I'd I buy bet that. they'll build this mage tower again. Guys, Let's they blow broke, it up. They broke down the mage tower. Should we build it again? Yeah, we should probably build the mage tower again. Okay, let's, let's do it. That's why nothing's happening, because we keep wasting all our time rebuilding the same friggin' <laughs> building. Like, how about instead of building a mage tower, let's build, so, like, a... I almost said build a wall, and I almost fell really, really fast. <laughs> how about we build a build cannon? A, what if we know. build a wall, and we no, made we'll the demons pay for it? <laughs> by not letting them destroy our mage towers anymore. Or, or better yet, if you're going to build a mage tower, you know, we... Sorry. Put some sh sorry. Like, arcane shields on it. Well, no, I was going to say, sorry, Alliance. We know how to make an arcane bomb. Why don't we just throw that in their general direction? That yeah. would work. It's worked before. Let's start fucking bombs. Let's do, let's do <laughs> literally anything except build the mage tower again. Well, you know, there's like some architect just standing there. He's like, guys, it worked in uh, Northrend. We can do this. Come on. Let's, yeah. What if we uh, tried jousting? That worked really well in the past. <laughs> I, I will okay, say. I've got a theory as to why we keep on rebuilding the towers. No, are we this stuck is, in the time loop? <laughs> no, no, no. I've got, a, I've got a perfectly good lore reason for why we keep on building the, the mage tower and, and all that and the command center and all that stuff. It's payback to the Masons in Stormwind and stuff like that for all the times that they were wronged and they didn't get paid and stuff. They're like, you know what, guys, it's been a couple of decades, but we're going to give you some real steady work for the next several months that will and, and we'll pay you for it, too. All these adventurers will collect supplies for you. We'll have plenty of gold coming in. Uh, we've got you set. This is this is the payback for all that time, you know. Also, now, shout out to, to Musikita in the chat who managed to get that out just before you said it, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even look at Twitch chat. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Right. Vanessa is right. actually behind it all. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> okay, see? I never come up with it. That, that's why she's in John's order hall is because she's secretly driving reasons. Reeks of Van Cleef. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, no, they just Vanessa don't use mortar anymore. The final boss of 7.2. Mage Tower, they just put blocks on it. Strong wind will knock it down. That's what it is. Yeah. So it's, it's a Jenga tower. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, I will say, as much as we, you know, lament about the the story, there are a few good of the um, the world quests sprinkled in there that that I like to do. Depending on the character I'm on, there's, um, if you've ever gone over and done the spiders, if you're on anything but a mage, you just go over there and it gives you a buff and you can walk around and blow up spiders. But if you're a mage they actually give you permanent dragon's breath. And so you just walk around with this flamethrower shooting out the front of you and just fry all the spiders. Oh, that's, um, that's interesting because I also did one where it was clearly like designed to let people pretend to be rogues for a little while. Yes. Did they and, get grappling yep. hooks? And as a rogue, I was just like, well, this is the easiest quest that ever lived. Like, there's all this stuff around, like, this will let you do this to a demon. And this will, I was like, I'm going to just be a rogue. How about I just be a rogue and finish this quest in two seconds? Done. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is great. This made me feel real good about my class. So I, I, you know, super props to Blizzard for putting that stuff in there then to make us feel good about the classes we play. Yeah. There's, you know one, my... there's one for Death Knights. If you, uh, it's the one where if you walk around, they give you the, the frost horn and basically you can call down the dragon flight and they'll fly over and do a path of frost and, wipe out a bunch of the, the elites. If you're a death knight, they give you the dragon and you just get on the dragon and do the bombing run from the dragon. <laughs> so nice. So they've tweaked it up for each, each class has their own 
you know, special, like, we're the Death Knights, we're doing this, so you as a Death Knight get the, the special version of this quest, which yeah. is kind of cool. You know what my biggest complaint about World Quest and the Broken Shore is? The rewards? What's that? No. Travel there is time. one there is one world quest in particular it's green it's it, it had a little bit of green in it it's the one dealing with uh basilisks and rescuing eggs and birds and stuff right <laughs> oh i love that one that one's super easy yeah. you get birds following nope. you it's the great. world quest the world quest is easy there's nothing bad about the quest mechanically it's the fact that the person who introduces the quest for you is Thistle Crow. Yeah. Here's the thing about that. Thistle Crow, to me, to me, I remember Thistle Crow in Cataclysm. One of the most badass freaking characters during that playthrough in Hyjal and stuff like that. Thistle Crow to me is like, man, this is a character that I really hope that they bring back later on in the story because i could see thistle crow you know really doing some badass stuff and i go to the world quest area where that stuff is and thistle crow pops up and she has a voice because they've given a lot of these world quest givers voices and stuff like that and she talks about those poor little birdies and i'm like that doesn't sound badass not at all. my thistle crow not my thistle crow exactly <laughs> Is thistle crow again well, who was the who was the quest giver up in Hygel during oh, the Dryad, the Cataclysm Dryad? Yeah, I'm wondering if if they oh, were she, trying to... she would have been way better for that. Well, that's what I'm wondering is if they if they kind of got that mixed up maybe and no, they no, meant that's... to do it. Well, or is I that her? She... No, that would have that would have been the that would have been the perfect uh, person. It's definitely a different voice than hers, but I mean, like that would have been the perfect kind of character to have doing that. But no, they have Thistle Crow, and it's just I don't know. There's some there's some characters that we haven't heard voices to until 7.2, and they had voice actors do their voices and stuff, and I just feel like i know this is like the weirdest tangent in the world and it's like this is a strange thing for me to be griping about when it comes to wow have but, you been on here before the, the, yeah. the whole show is tonight, i know so i know i know but this lee's voice this lee's voice actor does not sound in how i kind of envisioned this lee crow sounding in my head uh, okay again who's this lee crow have you played through hygel yeah okay uh druid character there was a quest involved where she was trying to get some information out of Twilight Cultus, and there was this one cool part where she was transformed as a bird and then kind of like out from the shadows appeared and basically cut a person to get her. Oh, yeah, I remember her. She was cool. Yeah. And she well, has she's, this... a, she's a druid. Of course she likes the little animals. The poor birds. That makes sense. The poor birdies, Ben. Is... Look. There are people who I know in real life who are badasses who melt at the sight of a puppy. It happens, Ro. Not everybody in WoW thing. can be completely cold-hearted like John. It's not possible. <laughs> and and wow. as a WTB Gold says in the, in the um, room, she also is a champion for the Druids as well. We have her in, right. our, in the Druid Order Hall. Well, right. uh, if it makes you feel any better, Ro, I kind of feel the same way about... Uh, Lillian Voss, like super badass character, mm -hmm. super happy to have her, and then she talks, and I'm like, oh no, they went with that. Yeah, voice. Hi, John, I have, yeah, I haven't heard Lillian Voss. Uh, um, in so Legion. I guess you know, it's fine. Just, it just fits, impersonate it. It fits with the lore, but they've they made some decision at some point that all undead need to sound like they've smoked a billion cigarettes, <laughs> and they have the Marge voice. Um, from the Simpsons. Yeah, she, she's just like, "Hello, we're gonna go oh. stab somebody," and I'm just like, "All right, Krusty, come on, let's go." I thought you were <laughs> cool, and now all I picture is Krusty the freaking clown with me, and it's not as cool. So it's fine. Uh, it's fine. It's just a, it's just the voice doesn't match what was in my head. That's a me problem. That's yep. not a wow problem, but. Yep, just like it's a me problem for Thistle also. But hey, whatever. Sometimes it's the little things that make us happy or grumpy. Yeah. So that's just, how it goes. You know, I've 
Oh, hey, John. Speaking speaking of tangents and rogues, I, the, I'm going to do my rogue next for the story. I got to finish up the uh, Druid Tryhard storyline, and then I'm moving on to my rogue. So I'll let you know. But I'm I'm looking forward to the rogue storyline. It's good. I really liked it. It's uh, yeah. secret agent-y. So, so uh, that'll be awesome. Okay. And you get Lily dropping... Boss at the end. Spoiler. I know, right? Yeah. Totally dropping this then. Which character should I level next? Rogue. What what do you have? You have the mage and the monk Doesn't leveled. Matter. I have rogue. mage and monk leveled. Warlocks don't count. It's rogue. Wow, Ben. <laughs> Hey, well, one wow, because bad. I don't want to play. I don't want to play a discount mage, and two uh, because oh, oh. my warlock is my level thirteen bank alt. Wait, all right, just... good night, guys. It's been a good show. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> did you just call him a trash panda? No, I didn't call him a trash I didn't panda. Call him a trash panda. <laughs> I love Bro. See, his personality comes through even though he's a warlock. There's a difference. Ben, what do you have at a hundred? Uh, like I said, I. It, Everything except for the warlock. Rogue. Okay. Actually, probably death. No, do rogue. Just do rogue. Play the well, best class in I, the game, I, Ben. Here's well, the... I know the Death Knight story, and I'm looking for the best Order Hall story. Mm. Just play the rogue. Yeah, you do. <laughs> gotta go with the rogue. Honestly, ha although I haven't played it myself, I kind of have to agree with John here. From what yeah. I know, from what I know, what the rogue story entails, it sounds like the rogue's the most interesting one. I genuinely well, maybe... have no idea if it's the best. I just know that, like, I have an idea of what rogues are, and I felt like the entire time I was being a rogue in this expansion, it felt good. I, I will say, I having boss. played it... I poisoned a boss. <laughs> Go, bro. Okay, that, <laughs> I will that say does seem kind of cool. <laughs> the shaman... Okay, so I, I can speak for the shaman one, though. The shaman one is really cool in that essentially allows you to find out what happened in the aftermath of the cataclysm, considering that we destroyed Alakir, we got rid of Ragnaros. Mm -hmm. So what happens next with those elemental Lords and the shaman uh, quest line talk goes all yeah. into that. And that's and, kind I mean, of that, that seems cool and interesting. I like the whole warrior concept because of, you know, where the, the order hall is and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's way too much Odin. There's it's Odin. all Odin. It's all Odin all the time, and it's just it's it's rough. I enjoyed the Paladin storyline. I I really enjoyed the the Paladin storyline. I enjoyed it more that I had done the Death Knight storyline first because, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it, but at some point the Death Knights end up in the Paladin Order Hall. And then at some point in the Paladin story, the Paladins end up in the Priest Order Hall. So, you know, if you want to go see what other class Order Halls are without having to play those classes, play the Death Knight because you get to see yours and the Paladin Order Hall and play the play Paladin because you can go see the Priest Order Hall. You've all um, already been in the Rogue one, but you're not allowed in there now and we made it way <laughs> better and you can't see your <laughs> stay It out. is pretty cool. I will give it that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, so the, out of all this, has anybody is, done the druid? I did the druid. Like I said, I'm in the middle of the druid one. There's a lot of sleeping. There's a there's a Accurate lot. The of, there is okay. a lot of <laughs> sleeping. It's a lot of nightmare stuff. It's interesting, but good lord, my bodyguard. You, I'll click on my body. Uh, I've got one of the druids as a bodyguard. I'll click on the druid bodyguard and go. I'm awake. <laughs> look over I'm like I didn't ask if you were sleeping but I bet you were do you get Lunara as a bodyguard or is she just in the druid order hall uh, I would have to see if she's a bodyguard option I don't remember off the top of my head or am I thinking Can... of Brightwing yeah I know Brightwing's in there right you get Brightwing but not as a, not as a bodyguard blame but, but no, I but Brightwing Brightwing is a champion I think what? Yes, but Brightwing is one of your followers, but okay. they can't be a bodyguard. Right. I, but I want Brightwing to follow around okay. and eat the corpses of my enemies. <laughs> uh, Muse says she's not a full bodyguard. She does one of those. You get the, um, oh, the ability pop. that's on a three-minute cooldown where they pop in, do something, and then pop out. For Brightwing or for Lunara? For Brightwing. Okay. Yeah, so far, uh, WTB Gold is saying that Lunara is not in WoW. Lunara so. is definitely in WoW. I just don't remember where she is. She's somewhere. Hang on. I'm looking at... 
No, because right now I have Narlex, Brol, Bear Mantle. You get Hamul, R- Rune Totem, Solyndra, Glade Song, and you get Zentabra, which is just amazing because I love. You're just making up words now. No, I love Zentabra. If anyone doesn't remember, Zentabra is the druid um, from Cataclysm that you had to teach how to be. A, you took them out, and they're like, "Well, let me try this uh, this uh, feral thing." And they they tried feral, and they were horrible oh, at it. Oh yeah. And okay. They, let, let me try this moonkin thing, and and like was would moonfire you and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Oh, okay. and you do get you do get my loon. I looked it up. Lunara is walking around the Dream Grove. So that's yes. where she is. Uh, okay. That's a shame because Lunara's badass. And she's way better well, she's... than my loon. Well, my loon is the one from Cataclysm that was the the one with the um, up in Hyjal. Let me tell you about Lunara, Tet. Uh, she's a dear lady, and she can laugh and jump through the air and hit you with a spear, and then laugh and jump through the air and hit you with a spear again. She can apply poison damage to you, and then she can just, through sheer force of will, make it do more poison damage to you. More dots. More and she dots. also sends floating eyeballs out. She's Yep, she can send out wisps. Have I sold you that Lunar is better than my Loon? Oh, yeah, I didn't disagree with you. I'm going to send I like... you a book of literature about <laughs> Lunara, and I just want you to review it and just maybe write just a page of why Lunara is awesome back to me. I just want to know that you know. I feel like one could just replace the word Lunara with Tassadar in this conversation, <laughs> and it'd feel like deja vu all over again. Um, Lunara actually is one of the rare, like, so there were a lot of things that Legion, you know, borrowed or was inspired by heroes on this expansion that was really cool. But one of the things that was a lot of fun is there's that world quest where you get to go into the, the flashback and you get to play a bunch of various things. And one of the things you play as is a dryad. Mm. That messed me up because they gave that Dryad a lot of like Lunara esque abilities, but it doesn't play exactly like Lunara, but it plays close enough that like I would be playing it and it would just mess with my head. And it actually was very difficult and frustrating for me because I would just like naturally my fingers would go to QWE and all of a sudden my character's moving weird and I'm like, what? this this isn't right. Something's not <laughs> working correctly. The Murky Quest did that to me. The Murky Legion. Quest was also like that, but he did at least play a lot more like Murky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. Anyway, I like Lunara. That's the moral of this story. <laughs> and I would play a druid if Lunara was a companion for druids. Heck, you'd play a dryad if Lunara was a character to play. Oh, they should make dryad a playable race. I would play alliance even if it was an alliance race, because I like dryads, because I like Lunara. Well, what if we got dryads and centaurs? Mm, dryads are cooler than centaurs. I agree. No, but I mean, one for that would be the thing. The alliance would get the dryads because they get the pretty race, as uh-huh. you guys have said, and we get the centaurs. That's true. No, we no the horde should totally get the dryads just to you know break the mold. <laughs> Ben's all about breaking the mold. This go yeah, right. and the and the centaurs are finding the the tauren in that one place, so we should totally get uh, the dryads. Guys, yeah, that yeah. one place with the things and the stuff. Do you remember yeah. that picture? Everybody's like, how do you put pants on a dryad? One leg <laughs> at a time, first of all, is the answer. Second, do you remember <laughs> that picture, that educational picture of how do dogs wear pants that were going yeah. around? <laughs> we already did the work. It's fine. It's fine. It's the the back end gets the pants. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where people landed on that. Ultimately, I'm saying the back wow. end gets the pants because otherwise it just looks weird. Look, trolls never have things on their feet. They could like put a band around a centaur's legs and be like, those are the quote unquote pants. They, they oh, have they have nails on their feet. Oh, God. The, we can't well, talk thank about you. the back toe again. Thank you very much for joining us this week. Uh, Ted and Ro, it's been a pleasure to have you. Uh, Ted, where can people find you? I'm on Twitter at at Ivory Tiger. Right, and Ro, what about you? Where can people find you? 
You can find me on Twitter at Rowow. That's R H O W O W. And if you're interested in other stuff I do on the internet, go to realm maintenance.com or go to rolling restart.frozenfoxmedia.com. And uh, Ted, you do a show, don't you? I do. We do uh, the AIE podcast every two weeks. In fact, we're doing it this Sunday. So uh, if you want to listen in, just hit us up on the uh, AIE-guild.org and go to the podcast live page. We do it at 5 p.m. Pacific. All right. And John, how about you? Where can people find you? If people want to hear more from me, follow me on Twitter at John underscore Jagger. You can hear me talk about Heroes of the Storm on Core. Core! And that can be found at heroesforyou.com. And that's part of the Frog Pants Network. It's a lot of fun. We have a good time. We talk about Lunara. So if you were like, man, that podcast was a little iffy through all the Destiny 2 talk, but then John started talking about Lunara and I was on board, check out Core. Core! Ben! Yes, John. Hello. Hi, John. We made How it. How are you doing? We made it to the end of the show. Yeah. Uh, but before we get to the official end, I need to know something from you. Okay. If I want to hear more Ben, where can I do that? Oh, well, the best place to do that is uh, follow me on Twitter. I am at Ben the Mage. Uh, that's my name, B-E-N, not as in I have been a mage a mage in the past no 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 ben the mage ben a mage no you're giving out the wrong info but ben uh, if you want to hear me talk about stuff more i am actually on another show called battle pets it is with Aludra, and uh we talk about battle pets in the world of warcraft bean the mage no bean like throwing throwing at the mage mr bean the mage no rowan atkinson the mage no. <laughs> I'm so glad cameras <laughs> were still on for that little pantomime. Uh, all right, sorry. This show, Azeroth Roundtable, you can follow us on Twitter. We are at Azeroth RT. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, want to complain about this episode because we talked about Destiny too much, ooh, uh, you can send those emails to Azeroth Roundtable at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to listen to all of our episodes, uh, in fact, we have a listener who started at episode one and is. Uh, Continuing forward. Bless Good for them. you, listener. They're not going to yeah. hear this for a long time, but yeah. when you get here, Destiny 3 you. may be out by the time we listen <laughs> True. to this. I'm betting that we lose them before they get to this episode. But if we <laughs> did bless you. You know, I wonder if they're going to get to the point where they're like, oh, God, John's always negative, or, hey, John's really passionate about this game. We'll see. We'll see. It's a yeah. side. It's like Civil I'm War. I'm curious. Are you Team Iron <laughs> exactly. Man or are you Team Captain America? surprisingly john's both i am both yeah but uh anyways if you want to listen to all of our episodes you can find them on itunes stitcher tune in alpha geek radio and of course at azrothroundtable.com and our intro contains music from those wonderful folks at blizzard uh so you know russell brower thank you unknowingly you gave us a uh, theme song and you're awesome he gets good hugs well, hey, everybody, this brings us to the end of the show. I uh, wanted to just tell you guys that uh, Patreon.com is where you can go to support this show. And you can do that with money. Because we're money-hungry, evil people. And that's what we need Wait, to Wait, what? Um, no. Anyway, no. Patreon.com no. slash AzerothRT. Actually, uh looking to make some changes over there i i've said that before and i still can't figure out how to get anything i change to actually stick so i'm going to continue to try to figure that out and uh hopefully we'll have some new information on that soon did you try hitting the save button no because every time i hit the preview button it's not reflected anyway it's fine i'll figure it out it's just, it's fine we're fine here everything's just, fine it's, everything's on fire everything's burning down <sighs> It's fine. And I'm pretty sure your money and support could help it. So patreon.com <laughs> slash Azeroth RT. <sighs> I didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. Exactly. Hey, John. Hi, Tet. How, how many fire sauce do you get at Taco Bell? Mick asked me to ask you. Uh, it's How about, let's assume 
Let's start at seven and work our way up from there. <laughs> Will they actually you give know, you seven? No. Okay, so speaking of Taco Bell, uh, Sarah brought home, uh, she picked up a quick snack on the way home. So I got to try those naked chicken, like They're nacho chips delicious. or whatever. Uh, if you can have the cheese with them, yeah. <laughs> Lactose intolerant <laughs> bastard. So, so what you <laughs> so what you're saying is the naked nacho chicken nachos without the nacho cheese yeah, the, aren't the, any good. The super naked version not so great. <laughs> All it is is like a really thin chicken nugget in a triangle. So uh, there you go. They're chicken Doritos. Yeah. Yeah. Without the Doritos. That's unfortunate, Ben, because I think those are really good. But you know what? And you could get like some buffalo wild wing sauce, put it on there, and just make thin hot wing chips. Mm, I could. Mm, that does sound uh, good. I have that. I'm going to do that at some point. I wonder if you could make a taco shell out of that. Oh, wait. Oh, let's talk about And with that, this has been a podcast. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and have a great night or day. Bye-bye. Or something. <laughs> have a great night or day. The have choice a great time. is up to you. <laughs> The listener. <laughs> not not science. <laughs> we should do a choose your own uh, adventure podcast at some point. Um, okay. Goodbye, we had, everybody. We had, a, um, we had a principal who would do morning announcements. And he always ended his morning announcements with, So, have a great day, or don't. The choice is up to you. I was always like, no, you're oppressive school. This one's deciding whether or not I have a good day. And it's coming up on the bad day way more times than the good day. Actually, that's you not end up, true. You he end was... up turning the page 84 way too often instead of page 71. <laughs> yeah. He was, a, he was a great principal. That was my middle school principal, I believe. And uh, he, All right. I might have that wrong. He's awesome. Okay, Rose got to go. Sorry. I got to go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. You get out of here and we'll keep. Rambling. Bye, Ro. Yes. You're not missing Bye, anything. It's it's all downhill from here. Um. So my okay, middle that's sc- where I stopped the podcast. <laughs> my middle school <laughs> principal. Um. He. Uh, I used to. I had this really great theory, which was that if you turned yourself in for things you shouldn't be doing before you got reported for things you shouldn't be doing, it would save you from getting in trouble, and it totally worked. So, Wait, so basically, if you're a narc, you build up points. Yeah, but I narked on myself, Ben, and that's what was great. <laughs> so what would happen is I would get in trouble for, let's say, talking in class. Right. And they're like, we're going to tell the principal about your talking in class and being a disruption. I'd be like, oh, no, that's awful. So Are I would you a disruption in class. <laughs> I would then go to the principal's office. And I'd be like, oh, hey just something you know i don't know if they're even going to tell you about this i just want to let you know you might hear about this it's not look i know i shouldn't have been talking and being disruptive i just this was going on and i was having a bad day and uh, oh john that's that's fine thanks for telling me that's that's great (laughs) and nothing would happen now this did backfire one time and the reason it backfired was because me and all my friends got in trouble (laughs) <laughs> I don't remember what we all got in trouble for, but we were all in trouble. And I went and told the principal about it. I, you know, did my did my move. Uh, and all my friends except me got detention. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you, they I first of all, I don't think they had a right to be mad. Hey, they had the opportunity to totally talk their way out of it. They could have narked on themselves, too. And it's not like I narked on them. Yeah. I just went and was like, hey, here's the little thing they have. Oh, all right. And the next thing I know, they're all in detention, and I'm not. So what did you actually do? I don't remember. I did a lot. Like, middle school was a weird period of time. We broke into the school at one point. It wasn't really breaking into the school. It was... We deliberately put something over the latch, and then when my teacher left the school and the door shut and was supposed to automatically lock, it didn't, so we then all went into the school. So we romped around in a closed school It's really your teacher's fault for not checking the door. Yeah, I mean, he, he should have checked to make sure it was locked, and it wasn't. So we had, a, we had a grand time. We didn't vandalize anything or anything like that. Nothing serious. 
Um, <laughs> I look, Philip J. Fry in the chat. I did not talk my friends into breaking into the school and rat them out. We did not get caught for breaking into the school. Um, and but suddenly there's a knock on the door. <laughs> that that part wasn't done. Yes, it was my idea to break into the school. That part is true. But <sighs> that was just because we wanted a place to make out with our girlfriends that weren't out in public. Did you bring your girlfriends or? Yes, it was. There okay, were, just making there, sure. There were... Just making sure. Anyway, it was middle school. Like, lots of stuff <laughs> happening. And so we had one teacher who talked like Mr. Mackey from South Park. Okay. And he uh, he used to get mad because Blake and I would sit in the back of the class and just talk like Canadians through his <laughs> lectures. And we would just sit there and go, oh, how's the fish, eh? Oh, pretty good, eh? I'm catching one, you hoser. Like, just stereotypical Canadian, like like that kind of stuff well that's great and rather than like discipline us or get mad at us in the class he would send us out back like because it was it, they were the outdoor classroom type things so we would just go sit on the porch and we would just keep doing it like he didn't realize that we weren't doing it to be disruptive we were doing it because we were legitimate legitimately entertained by our stupid bs so we would just go in the back and we would just keep doing it. And he'd come out and, okay, are you guys ready to come back in? Okay. Uh, he did actually say <laughs> okay, but he didn't do it quite that much. And we would just be like, no, we, we're good out here. We're, this is way better than your lecture. So, no, we're not interested in coming back into your class right now. Okay, well, you just stay out here, okay? Well, and we did. We'd answer in the stupid fake Canadian voice because we were shitty middle schoolers. <laughs> no, the fishing's way better out here. And into the class he'd go. And uh, I was a, probably a fun student to have, I'm sure, for teachers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We'll just, yeah. 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 All right, guys. Well, I got to take off as well. Thank you for having me. Sorry well, about yeah, thanks for coming on. Sorry about trying to hijack the show. You know, oh, it's habit. fine. <laughs> That's why we restarted it four we times. We expect it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's just it's just like trying to pull on raid night. Got it. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. And look, you wait, got wait, a yellow wait, card. No, no, it wasn't wait. a red card. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. You're good. All right. cool. Everyone's happy. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. All right. Have a good one. Yep. Well, we chased off all the guests. Apparently. Yeah, got rid of them. Well, I'm going to chase off Alpha Geek because, you know, why have that running? Get rid of all the dead weight. Bye, Alpha Geek. <laughs> Just kidding. If they're still Wait, in the chat. <laughs> I called them dead weight and I feel bad That's, about it. They're not dead weight. They're not. I love them. I love Ro and Tet. They're amazing <laughs> people. Yeah, that's why we have them on the show. Yes. It's not going to be like, oh, I hate this person. Let's bring them on. <laughs> I mean, technically we could do that. So time for late night with John and Ben. Yeah, this is the, end <laughs> of the show. So, uh, John, did you hear what happened in the news today? <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to believe it, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't watched late night in a long time. <laughs> that was your late night impression. Yeah, but it was like my my late eighties late night impression. That was, that was like actually uh, that was, like that was Letterman, fast really. approaching a Jimmy Fallon impersonation. The like kind of laughing at your own joke thing going. So <laughs> True. It was, it's pretty spot on, actually. Yeah, I'm okay with that, though. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we could probably call it a night there. I would imagine. I guess. I, I don't know. It's not like it's not like people are here to actually listen to us. I know. <laughs> They're like, we gave up on you guys talking about World of Warcraft in the first 30 minutes. So. Yeah. Say... Which you know what the thing is is I I'm gonna be surprised if anyone's like you never talked about WoW. I'm like, well, the second half we did. How long did you stick around? <laughs> Well, plus, like, hey, seriously. hey, we've, uh, we've, we've gone doing... to the note. There's no story news for a while. We've been doing a lot of wow talk lately. I feel like it's been fine. It's been fine. Yeah, we can talk no, about Destiny 2 for half a show. Well, look, it's our show. We can talk about whatever we want. Really. Need some Craig Ferguson impressions. I haven't heard enough of him to try and do an impression of him. I don't know. I guess I could look it up. You're right. That's so... not good. <laughs> but he's Scottish. I don't really do a um scottish accent i don't think sometimes well, i can slip into it and do it I, mean, I do a really really bad one 
No, oh, because I, if I listen to it, it's going to go through on the stream. So we're not going to do that. Yeah, it's okay. Need more lesbian druids. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Look, okay, here's my theory. All female druids are lit. Wait, no, that's not true. Cause... Well, let's put it this way. Druids are more open to every experience than other classes. Okay, so hold on. Here's my theory. I don't know. So right, wait, hold on. Do we really want to broach this topic? Yeah, it's the after show. We can talk about lesbian druids. Let's talk okay. about it. So night elf society. Typically, the dudes were druids. This is this is Warcraft lore, not my personal opinion. I think anybody can do any class they want to do, but. Typically, the guys were druids, and they were the sleepy caster people in Night Elf Society, and the ladies were the warriors and the defenders and the fighters and kind of like an Amazon-type thing going. So with all the dudes sleeping for, like, centuries at a time, I would think there would be a lot of lesbian Night Elves. Yeah, I can see that. Well, no, because... See, the thing is, that goes off of it's a choice. Sure, and that's not true, but I mean, also, like, they don't see the dudes because they're just in a friggin' cave sleeping, so it's, like, the only reality they know. Well, you know, you know fall in love with who you love. Yeah, like, man, their experience is 100% other ladies because all the dudes are ever doing is sleeping because that, because those druids are boring. <laughs> I'm so boring, I fell asleep. Yeah, that's that, anyway. That's actually canon. Point is, WoW could use more lesbian druids. I guess is where I'm ultimately landing on this topic. Well, let's just put it this way: WoW can use more gay people overall. Yeah, I don't know. Has there been any canonically one? I don't think there have. Not not actually canonically. There's been like hints here and there, but that's about it. I'm trying to remember. Chat, do you know? Well, the fact that we can't think of anybody kind of just says it right there, kinda really. Kind of proves the point. Like, yeah. it's it's nobody in the limelight. Yeah, pretty much. Johnny Awesome. Johnny Awesome? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I... <laughs> he does have very fabulous hair. <laughs> Taronda. Yeah, basically, pretty much. I would be, too, if those were my two choices. <laughs> Leroy yeah. Jenkins. He likes chicken. So, switching topics here. John, should I get Player Unknown's Battlegrounds? Yes, you absolutely should, and we should play it. And you'll actually play with me if I get it? Yes. Yay! I like playing games with you. Where you're not insanely higher level than me, and your MMR screws up my good time. <laughs> well, okay, I'll tell you this about Player Unknown. I have won before, but... I was a burden to my team the entire time, <laughs> so I'm not good. Okay, well, I think I watched some clip of you, or or uh, was it Kyle who was streaming or something? I don't know. I saw something with you guys playing. Uh, I played with Steve Hammaker and Spencer HD, and I don't. Oh, remember. Spencer. Okay. Yeah, so Spencer was streaming it. Yeah, Spencer's really good, and the fourth guy, I'm not entirely sure who it, who it was. I was a friend of Steve's and uh, he was really good. And Steve and I got carried, but um, Steve has won several times since then. So I think he might be good now too. I think I might be the only one who's bad at that. Okay. Game. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, so I don't think I told you, but my paycheck last week was missing a couple days because you know, time clocks are funny sometimes. Yeah. So I definitely don't have money yet. But I've been working a heck of a ton of overtime, so a heck a ton. in theory, I uh, should be able to get it sometime soon because I really want to try it out. Looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's very stressful and fun. Okay, hold on. I'm going to read this uh, chat message real quick because it says my name and I should read it. Yeah. Uh, so John, a friend of mine, got his girlfriend to play HOTS, and she has been playing all week learning, then played with us tonight and got scared away when faced with much higher MMR players felt bad yeah i so that does happen it tries to balance it out um and it does a pretty good job but you know at a certain point when it's trying to balance out a really high number versus a new number um and also mmr is behind the scenes so 
if you are a brand new player and you're just winning a bunch, your MMR is actually going up very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you can be relatively new to the game and you can be kind of showing a back-end MMR that's really high and they can really hit you with a wall. And so, I, I don't know, I think it's just important to, to know that at a certain point when a game is trying to determine your skill level, they have to throw you to the wolves at a certain point to be able to say, okay, well, you're not there yet. Yeah, so. That, I can confirm over the past three weeks, has definitely happened to me a couple times, where it's like, we do okay, and then either then we start steamrolling, and then the next match, we're just getting annihilated. Then there's been some where it's like, we're steamrolling at the beginning, but then... You know, once their characters get like, you know, their their level seven or their ults or whatever, then they're steamrolling. I mean, a lot of it is going, you know, comp and stuff as well on mats. And I mean, it's just one of those things where you get a few characters that you're really good at and uh, play around, have fun and understand that losing happens. Yeah, you can't have 100 percent wins. And, and I'm not saying that she thought that either. And I completely understand of playing with someone with like a much higher MMR than me because, you know, I play with Sarah and she's played a ton more than me. Yeah. And, you know, I have a very small sample size to play with. But, you know, I get in there and, it, of course, since I'm doing the five matches and I'm trying new heroes since I just bought a whole ton of heroes, I'm not the best I can be on the characters I'm playing and stuff. So there's a lot of different factors going into it. Yeah. So, but, uh, I, John, I Zarya is awesome. Zarya she's a fantastic. lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun to play. A lot of also the Oriel, heroes a lot really of fun. Good. I don't like her. Oriel, but... I I really like her, but uh, the biggest problem I had is that I kept trying to position myself, my smell, myself <laughs> to uh, smack other heroes into a wall, and then I'd overextend. So like I knew I was doing it, and I was doing it wrong, but I'd do it anyway. Right. Well, her damage just got buffed, so I mean they want you to be in there. They want you to be doing it. Um, yeah. And honestly, when I notice an Ariel on the enemy team, it's less when their healing is really good, although that can be super annoying too. And it's more when they play a very effective game of knocking me back at the right moments. Like mm -hmm. they can tell when I want to charge in and engage, and then they have a knockback ready right for that moment. And it just it puts the brakes on everything when an Ariel is really good at doing that. And yeah. Uh, it can be very, very frustrating. Um, you know, I, I uh, see one, one or two of the matches I played Skeleton King, you know, Lee Oral. It's been forever since I played him. Yeah. And uh, I got to say, I did OK. I died way more than I should have. Like way more. Yeah, it's kind of but, OK uh, on him. Well, I died like 12 times. The rest of my team died like twice each. Uh, that's so, a, that's way a lot. more. Um, but yeah. I mean, it's not uncommon for skeleton Kings to have seven yeah. or around seven. Deaths but, uh, so. no, I will say though that I, I was really good with the ult and I, you know, was really good with the, um, the, you know, just, just the mechanics with him. I just, you know, I didn't retreat soon enough. So, but, oh man, I had this one match with where butcher was just constantly coming after me when I was Zarya. So he'd charge and then right before he get me, I'd shield myself. I'm like, you're an idiot. And then I'd kill him. Yeah. They just happen gonna, over and over and powerful. over again. And then he started running towards someone else and I'd shield them. I'm like, huh? So the other night I was playing uh, with Bo and Ryan, uh, Ryan Reader from Lords of the Storm. And mm -hmm. so he was, uh, Ryan was trying D.Va and we were trying to find ways to make her self-destruct actually hit. Because, <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, people run away from it. Yeah. And I mean, right now, essentially, it's zoning. Yeah, it's mostly zoning. It can be a good tool for uh, wave clear because it does do good damage to, like, creep. And, you know, if you're on Braxis, yeah. it'll it'll bust up that Zerg wave and stuff like that. But um, we Ryan flew in. He shot the the detonation thing forward. It landed right in the middle of the other the, of the enemy team. They're all like, oh, we got to get out of here. They fight for a minute. They turn to start running, and I was on Dahaka, and I yeah. tongued Lucio and pulled him <laughs> back into the explosion radius, and it detonated oh, nice. on him, and it was, it felt very cool. That was awesome. Um, I think I have Dahaka. You need to teach me how to play him. Dahaka is super fun. I love Dahaka. Uh, when you do that tongue, do you yell, "Get over here!" Get over here. It's not long enough, but I should. Oh. 
Well, then do you do it with stitches? Stitches would be a good one to do it on. Oh, man. I don't know. Uh, do you watch the, the WTF moments often on uh, YouTube for heroes? Mm, no, not so much anymore. Uh, I should, but back when I was watching it, it was always just like it 100% Abathur was all it seemed to ever be. Yeah. I don't watch it a whole ton anymore, but uh, I did see one yesterday where uh, a stitch is totally hooked and then ate an exploding diva. <laughs> Oh yeah. Then, then then he's walking, you know, toward like through the gate with the rest of his team and then it blows up and wipes them all out. It was so great. Yep. Yeah, don't eat the bomb on stitches. It just blows up when you spit it out and you will kill your team. Oh, he didn't spit it out. It just blew up. Oh, so like, it it with detonates him and everything. inside him. It doesn't wait yep. for him to. Okay, that's Yeah, awesome. you can even see the circle like like growing and everything <laughs> around him. It was so great. Ah, that's so good. I'm like, oh, good job. I officially saw the best Abathur video that ever existed. So Abathur, weird tricks with Abathur will never work for me now okay. because I've seen the best one. It was on Hanamura, and there's a big team fight around that giant mechanical boss. Okay. And you can see the team fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting, and they're trying to get it, and they're trying to get it. And they kill the boss, and they're all trying to get on the point, and everybody kills everybody. And there are two Abathur. There's an Abathur on each team. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And they both appear, and they both go to capture it and are slapping each other trying to <laughs> capture the point. So they're just doing their little shitty Abathur slaps. And to try and get kills, they're also laying their little mines underneath each other. And yeah. so finally one slaps the other to death, and it's just about to capture the boss, and the mine goes off underneath them and kills him too. <laughs> Now the both teams are entirely wiped and the boss is just free to catch. Yep. I saw that, <laughs> that one. Was so good. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That game's game's fun. Yeah. It is. All well right. with that, John, I think it's time to go. Yeah, we should call that a we should yeah. call that a show. We gave people some nice bonus content this week, I feel like. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, we'll for joining us. Um, you all have a fantastic weekend. Uh, do something fun. Play some World of Warcraft. and Or some Heroes of the Storm or, or some Overwatch. Whatever you guys want to play. You, you do you. I, I can play some Mass Effect. Nice. I'm going to maybe well, play some No, Old don't say Republic. nice. I'm, it's Mass Effect Andromeda. I mean, hey, if you want to play it, you want to play it. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I, I totally interrupted. What are you playing? Maybe some old Republic. Oh, cool! Have been, fun with that, man. Been enjoying. I made a Sith Inquisitor. And I was Ooh. playing that. Um, yeah, people want you to play some PUBG. Uh, What's PUBG? Player Unknown's Battleground. Oh yeah, you know, once I can actually afford it, I will. I uh, might play some Injustice Two. And, Electric Boogaloo. Um. So the Sith Inquisitor is weird because the Sith Inquisitor, I feel like. Oh, I saw a lot of that story with uh, Sarah playing it. Like they push the Inquisitor towards being insane. And I like the it like the story's good and I'm sticking with the character and all of that. But I mm -hmm. think what struck me with the Sith warrior is I think the character that I built in my mind was represented very perfectly through my dialogue options and all of that. Like, okay. I was able to say, this is what I think my character is, and that was well represented, and I'm having a harder time with that with the Inquisitor. Um, I'll be like, okay, this is what I think the character's thinking, and then I'll look at the choice options, and I'm like, oh, none of these really match what I'm thinking. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there, but... Um, it's good. It's good stuff. That's good. Yeah, good stuff is good. Anyway, that's it. That's the show. No more talk of it. Chat room, you will not distract us further. Have a good weekend. Bye, everybody.